Today's daf is daf tes, and we'll begin with the Mosifin Bichol Ala Kodesh, which is four lines down from the top, and that's where we left off yesterday, Minol. So the Brisa had formulated the principle that we add from Chol and attach it to Kodesh, meaning we sanctify a time period that's not really included in the very basic Kedusha Sayom. And the Gemara wants to know, what's the source for this? How do we, how do we derive this conclusion? The Sanya we learned at the Brisa. Now, the Brisa is going to focus on a very strange end of a Pasuk, three words in a Pasuk that don't seem to fit in anywhere. And this is a Pasuk in Parashas Kitisa in Shmos Perek Lamidal, Sheishas Yomim Tavod, Uvayom Ashvi Tishbos, Becharichu Vekatsir Tishbos. But what is this Becharichu Vekatsir Tishbos? The Torah already commanded us to avoid Malacha, Vayom Ashvi Tishbos, and that means we have to avoid 39 categories of labor. Why are you adding Harisha and Ketzira? It seems to be totally redundant. And here we have a drush of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva says, He says, on the one hand, we would say that Harish Vekatsir is completely superfluous here. And that, therefore, we're going to take it out of context. That's called the Eino Inu. If it cannot fit into its context, which is Shabbos, because why would the Torah have to command me in these two malachas when we're already enjoyed for 39 malachas? Then we sort of pick it up with a crane and put it down in Shvitz to teach me the halach of Tosefah Shvitz. And even though Shvitz starts on Aleph Tishrei, we're going to add to Shvitz. We're going to start a little bit earlier. Eino Tzarek Loma Shacharish Tatsish of Shvitz. The Torah did not have to tell me that you have to abstain from plowing and harvesting during the year of Shviz. Shereik Far Nemar, that we derive from Pashas Bahar. Vayikra Chafei, Uvishana Shviz, Shabbos Shabboson Yelo Ares, Shabbos Hashem, Sadcholo Tizra, Bekarbacholo Tizmar. So the Torah already enjoins us from doing Melechas Karka during the year of Shviz. Elo, who is this extra addition of Kharish from Kotzit Tishvos? To teach me courage, shall erev shviz, anichnas shviz, the kotzish shall shviz ayotze the motzay shviz. Now we're going to divide up this pasuk. I mean, these last three words in the pasuk into two parts. And we're going to derive two halachas that really are two sides of one coin. From the words sad tizra, we certainly know that these malachas are us. But when the Torah repeats, it says courage tishvos. It's telling me Erev Shvitz. That means we're in the sixth year of the Shvitz cycle. And there are peros that are growing, that have been planted and have reached what we call Avashlish during the sixth year. And now they continue to grow and develop during the seventh year. And the Torah is telling me that these peros are prohibited and they have a Kedusha to them. And why is that? Because it's the halacha of Tosef Shvit. And the Gemara Moed Katan at the beginning points out that on a derisa level, the Iser that applies is going to be 30 days before Rosh Hashanah. And the Chachamim added a Gzera. What do they add? That we shouldn't be Choresh Sada, which is called the state Elon, from the period of time before Shvit, even earlier, than 30 days. But in any event, there's a distinction there in the Gemara between different types of fields. There's a category called the state Elon, another category called the state Fua. And there are different laws that are reflected in these two categories. And now we have the other part of the Pasuk, the Katsir Tishbos, and that's talking about heroes that are Yotze Mishvius Lemotze Shvius. So you have, let's say, for example, grains. And these grains you could have cut down during Shviz. And they would have already been edible. Not great, but it's already after Avashlish during Shviz. And now it hasn't been cut down until Shviz. And um, I'm sorry, it hasn't been cut down until Shviz, but it grew and it was royal Ekatsira during Shviz. And now all the laws of Shviz are going to apply vis-a-vis these 
peros, this tour that reached Havash Lish during Shvitz. That's why here in Eretz Yisrael, we have a problem even during the eighth year, because there are a lot of payrolls that are out, out there in the market during the eighth year that already had reached Havash Shlish during the seventh year. So this possible according to Rabbi Akiva, is teaching us what we call Tosefes Kedusha Shviz. We're going to add to the sanctity of Shviz in both directions, both Lefanel and Liachrev. Lefanel, we're going to derive from the Pasuk Becharish, and Achrev from the Pasuk Katsir. And we're going to talk about payrolls that began to grow in Shishis. And there are also Mishum Shviz and payrolls that began to grow in Shviz and weren't harvested till Shvinis. And they also have Giduchas So this is a posse that's teaching me Tosefes Shviz. Now, how do we derive the principle of Mosifim Michol Ala Kodesh with regard to Shabbos? And the answer is that Shabbos, and for that matter, Yom Tov as well, and we'll add Yom Kippur to boot, we have to be Mosif Aleim, add to them before and after. And that's going to be based on the equation called Kedusha Sazman. Just like in Shviyas, the day and the year is sanctified with Kedusha Sazman, and the Torah requires to extend it in both directions before and after, so too Shabbos Yom Tov and Yom Kippur since they are down with Kedush Sayom, we extend the Kedush Sayom both Lefanel and Lachre. That's the Shita of Rabbi Akiva. We move on now to the Bar Plukta, and that's Rabbi Shmuel. Shmuel Omer, no, no, no. The end of this Pasuk, the Charish of Akatsir, Tishbo, it's like the beginning of the Pasuk, is referring to Shabbos. Now, why would the Torah have to single out Choresh? And Katsir on Shabbos, it's one of, these are two of 39 Malothas. And the answer is, the Torah is going to teach us, by inference, something about the 16th of Nisan, if it overlaps with Shabbos, the day of the Omen. Because Ma Chorish, when does the Torah prohibit Chorish? That's only Rishus. The Torah says that you're not allowed to plow the land, a harisha shal rishus. It's not a mitzvah. And in fact, I'll prove to you that it's not a mitzvah because there's no need to do the harisha. Af katsir, so too, katsir, which is also a chavis, is always rishus. You didn't have to cut the, nobody forced you or commanded you to cut down your heart. And these two cases, these two categories of Kharish and Katsur Shus are prohibited on Shabbos. And now the Torah wants me to infer the following conclusion. Yatza, what's not included in the Isa Malach of Shabbos is Sir HaOmer Shu Mitzvah. On the 16th of Nisan, we have a mitzvah of Ktsiras HaOmer. And the Torah commands us to go out there even if we have already something that was harvested, that's not enough. You need a specific ktsira l'shem mitzvah for the express purpose of the Kravas HaOmen. On Shabbos, an event that the 16th of Siman overlaps with Shabbos, we will override the Shabbos and we will implement a ktsira HaOmer even though it's Shabbos. We're going to override the Shabbos. That's called ktsira HaOmer docha. Shabbos. And that's what we're going to derive the point of Shmuel from this pasuk of the Kharish and Makatsi Tishma. Let's go over. When does the Torah prohibit Kharish and Katsir on Shabbos? That's only because the Kharish shall reshus and a Kharish and a Katsir shall reshus. But in the case of a Katsir shall mitzvah, and that's going to be Katsir Sa Omer, there the Torah overrides the Shabbos. The Ritva explains that Rabbi Shmuel holds that there's an absolute obligation to bring the Omer from Bali that was cut on that day specifically for the express purpose of the Omer. And that sheet of Rabbi Shmuel is reflected in a Mishnah in Mesech de Benachas on Daf Samachay. Rabbi Akiva on the other hand holds that you could bring the Omer from any seal or from any barley that were cut down before that day. It doesn't have to be cut down on that day. 
And therefore, according to Rabbi Akiva, in a situation where Shabbos overlaps with the 16th of Nisan, the Ketzir is not Dochet Shabbos. We'll bring the Omer from Siorim that will cut down before the Shabbos. Okay. now asks the following question, Rabbi Shmuel, Mosif Michal HaKodesh Minole. Now that Rabbi Shmuel used the Pasuk of B'charish V'katsay Tishbos to teach me about Ketzir Omer on Shabbos, I no longer have a source from which I can derive the Allah of Tosefes, Shabbos or Tosefes, Shviz. And the answer is, Nafka Sanyo. He's going to derive it from the Allah of Tosefes, Yom Kippurim, which means that we have to begin our fast before nightfall on the 10th of Tishrei, and we have to end our fast after nightfall, adding and tagging on a piece of Chol of the 11th of of Tishrei to our fans. The Torah says in Parsha Semavi Nisam is Nafshal Sechem, Vitish Allah Chodesh Ba Erev, May Erev Yad Erev, Ad Erev Tishbatu Shabbat. And the Brysa wants to know what does this mean when the Torah says that your Inu, you afflict your Nefesh on the ninth of the month? The Nisam Nafshal Sechem, Vitisha, Yachal Vitisha. It's impossible. We can't say that the Tainus is on the 9th of Av. The date, the calendar date of the Tainus is the 10th of Av. Tabaloma says Ba'erev. Ba'erev means going into the Lila, the night of the 10th of Tishri. So why does the Torah say Biyom? It says in the Pasuk, B'tisha B'chot L'chodesh. So the, the Gemara answers, the Bryce answers, e, if we only had Ba'erev, I might think that he waits till Lila. That's the moment of time when Yom HaKippur as a Tainus commences. And there's no need to start fasting before the 10th. Let's wait till night for the 10th. Talmud Lama, the Torah says, Metisha, to tell me that we're not going to wait for Lila. Already on the 9th of Tishra, we begin our fast. Well, what does that mean? On the one end, the Torah says, Bo'eret implying that you don't start the fast until the night. On the other hand, the Torah says, B'tisha, implying that already on the ninth of, of Tishrei, we start our fasting. In case of that, we reconcile this. He begins his fast before nightfall, which means he's on the ninth of, of Tishrei, which means Tisha Ba'era. And then, she continues fasting from the beginning of the fast, which he started before nightfall, into nightfall for the entire 24-hour period of Yom HaKippur. So that means I'm going to tag on, on the 9th of Tishrei, before Yom HaKippur, a slice of time, which means that I'm adding from Chol to the Kodesh, and I will begin my fast then. Mainly, I've only derived the conclusion that on the ninth of Tishrei, going into Yom Kippur, I begin my fast early. But be it see also, what about going into the eleventh of Tishrei? It's the night after Yom Kippur. Me nine. How do I know that you should fast going into the night following Yom Kippur? Talmud Lomar, May Erev Ad Erev. You should begin your fast at night, meaning right before nightfall of the tenth of Tishrei, and you should go into the Beginning of the night afterwards, the following night. Who says that the same requirement of Tosefes applies to Shabbos? That we have to be Mosef Michol al Kodesh on Shabbos. How do you know such a thing? You, Rabbi Shmuel, are deriving it from Yom Kippurim. I don't know if I can extrapolate from Yom Kippurim and draw conclusions about Shabbos. And apparently the Gemara is of the Bryce is of the opinion that Yom Kippurim, in the sense of Inu, it's very machbir, it's an isakares, and therefore maybe the Torah was only machbir with Tosefis regarding Inu of Yom Kippur. How do we derive Shabbos? Tosef Shabbos, Tabad Lomar, Tishbisu. There's an extra word, Tishbisu. And that's coming to teach us that. Even on Shabbos, we have to be Mosef Michol HaKodesh. Yom Tov Yom Tov is ready on a lower echelon, on the hierarchy 
and the pyramid of Chumras ha, Hazman, Kedush Hazman. How do we know that the Torah requires even on Yom Kippur to Sefes, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, even on Yom Kippur? Talmud Loma Shabbat, not only is the extra word Tishmetu, but there's an extra redundant word Shabbat. But Ketzad, what do we finally derive as a conclusion once we have this puzzle? Is Kol Makom Sheish Bo Shvuz, anytime the Torah says to be Shobes, which means to uh, be enjoined from and, and abstain from Malacha, Mosifa Michal You have to add and tag on a piece of time from the Chol onto the Kodesh. And that's going to apply both going into Shabbos, into Yom Tif, and on the way out of Yom Tif, on the way out of Shabbos. So now the Gemara asks Rabbi Akiva, what's he going to do with this post? He already derived Tosefes, Kol Ala Kodesh, from the Shkarish of the Katsu Tishpos. What do I have to derive from the post? Hi, this post, the Nisim is not from Sechem and Tisho, my other one. What is he going to do with it? Because already from Bechorish Bechatz and Tishbos, I would have derived the conclusion that you have to start fasting before you enter into Yom HaKippur. And the Gemara answers me, Boy Lechetoni Chiyo Barav Difti. Now we're going to derive the halacha of mitzvahs achila on Erev Yom Kippur. It's a separate mitzvah achila, as you know. To eat on Yom Kippur, the Tani we learned in the Brisa Chiyavar of Difti Mi Difti, derived from the Pasuk Mi Nisa Mis Nafshal Seichem Betisha. And what was that mean? Betisha, but he Betisha Misadim Alov Asiri Misadim. We fast on the tenth of Tishrei, not on the ninth of Tishrei. What is the Torah telling me to afflict myself on the ninth of Tishrei? El Alov Alcha. It comes to teach us that Kol Ochel B'Shosef B'Chi Malav Akasu Keilu Is Ane. She vasi. So we're going to derive the bits of Achila to see on every Yom Kippur in the ninth of this pasuk. The Nisan is not shal seichem betisha. And why does the Torah uh, attach this mitzvah to Yom Kippur? And the pasuk says the Nisan is not shal seichem. And then it goes on to speak about Yom HaKippur, So on the one hand, the Torah uses the term Inui and mentions specifically and explicitly the 24 hours of Yom HaKippur. On the other hand, the Torah speaks about Tisha HaKodesh, which in the light of Rabbi Kibbutz Rasha is addressing the Mitzvah HaKivah Shesiyah. The answer is that if you eat and drink on chi, then it's considered as if you fasted on both the ninth and the tenth. There's a long discussion here about whether or not the mitzvah of eating on Erev Yom Kippur is a mitzvah in the ninth, or it's a preparation for the tenth. For example, if it's only a preparation for the tenth, then that mitzvah might start only as late as the morning. It doesn't include the night going into the night. If on the other hand, it's a mitzvah on the night, then it might include the night of the ninth as well. And it can't hurt to eat some extra food on the night just to be mocked, but this kind of humor will take. There's another nafkabir with regard to women. The nashim have the obligation, share it with men, of eating on the ninth of Tishrei. If it's a locha of preparing for the fast, then they're obligated to fast, and likewise they'll be obligated to mitzvah on the ninth. But if it's a din in the ninth, then it's a mitzvah sashim's mind grama and nachim duros. We might have another nafkamin about tachnun mincha on the eighth of Tishra. In any event, this is a basic fundamental issue about how to understand the mitzvah chila and shesia on the ninth. Now, with regard to Rabbi Akiva, it's a little bit interesting here because Rabbi Akiva, the Gemara says, is going to derive his conclusion about Tosefes, Shabbos, Yontav, and Shpiz from the Pasuk of Bechara Shubukatz and Tishba. And the truth of the matter is that that Pasuk seems to be addressing Kedushas Peyrot Shpiz to tell us that since it grew during Shpiz, it's also in Shpiz. Or since the completion of the development of the fruit 
for the grains who is in Shvius, if it has Kedusha Shvius. So that did of Tosefes doesn't tell you much about Isar Malach when we're talking about Shabbos or Yadiv. And for that matter, Yom Kippur, we're not just talking about mitzvahs and Kedusha, we're talking about the Lotaseh in joining you from Malach. So it's not 100% clear how Rabbi Akiva could use the Pasuk Bacharach Bacharach and Ishbos to derive conclusions about the Isar Malacha on Tosefish, Shabbos Tosefish, Yom. On top of that, we could ask the following question. How can we derive any conclusions about Tosefish from the Nisibis Nafshul Seichen? And there the Torah is talking about fast. And the Torah wants us to begin desisting from eating and drinking on Erev Yom HaKippur, on the 9th. That doesn't tell me anything about the Isra Malacha of Yom HaKippur. And I heard once from my Rebbe of Salvation, he said that there's one unit, indivisible entity called Kedusha Sayom in Yom HaKippur, which expresses itself in two ways. One in the Isra Malacha and the other is in the Isra HaKippur. But they both stem and originate and are generated by the same Kedusha Sayom, the same entity. 